Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. This is BRN AM for Friday, April 5th, 2024. And our top story today, will your older self give up the car keys? Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Dr. Lewis Morgenstern is a neurologist at the University of Michigan. Dr. Morgenstern, it is so great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. My pleasure. And that, look, this is a, uh, we, we often talk about issues related to aging. This is another important one and, and preparing to hang up the car keys, you know, giving up our autonomy and our ability to drive. Uh, this cannot be uh, doctor, an easy decision, decision or discussion with, uh, with parents and or their loved ones. I think it's one of the most difficult decisions and discussions that any family can have. All of us learned to drive when we were in our teen years. We take it for granted, but it's a very complicated task. It requires a lot of abilities, a lot of cognitive abilities, a lot of sensory and motor involvement, a lot of vision skills, and we have to recognize that. Yeah, and do, you know, I mentioned autonomy and you know, being able to head out on your own. I, I, yeah, I, when I was reading the, the study, I thought about my grandparents and my grandfather in particular used to take the car from Baltimore on the auto train, on the Amtrak auto train to go down to Florida and he wanted to drive. Uh, not, you know, this is way before Uber. Um, giving up that autonomy, that's a feeling, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to give that up. I mean, that is something that each of us has and, and we don't want to give that up. I think that's very true. And many people don't need to give that up. They can drive well into their senior years and, and do just fine. I think that most people would recognize, however, that their personal safety, the safety of other occupants in the car with them, loved ones usually, and pedestrians and other motorists on the road are very important. And nobody wants to hurt themselves or anybody else. And so, you know, weighing that autonomy versus the risk is really the important decision that individuals and their families need to come to grips with. And doctor, how do you identify those, you know, when your skills maybe are failing? I mean, sometimes we don't always tell ourselves the truth, but are there telltale signs, uh, maybe weaving in between the lines, you're not seeing the, the cars ahead of you, maybe you don't accelerate at the rate that you did, how, how do we identify that either individually or our caregivers or our loved ones do? I think one thing that we need to recognize is that people who have cognitive disorders like dementia, Alzheimer's disease, those types of disorders are not very able to determine whether they are safe to drive or not. And that's part of the disease. They just kind of lose the ability to understand those safety issues. I think that we really don't want to wait to people have minor accidents on the road or weaving. Um, my sense is that most family members from talking to their loved ones and understanding them can sense when things are starting to um, be unsafe for them to go out and operate a, a motor vehicle. And that's the time to take action. And, and let's talk about, I, and I want to spill this over into the next segment, but let's talk about initially how you broach that conversation. And, and there are actually some documents you need to, need to be thinking about, uh, just like you have a will, an estate plan, um, a care directive for healthcare. There's car, uh, almost like an automobile directive. Uh, how do you, how, first, how do you broach that conversation? And then what do you need to start planning for? How, how far in advance do you need to start planning? So I think the um, best time to start thinking about that is when people are not cognitively impaired, they're younger and healthy, and they're just anticipating the many needs that they may have in the future. So you can um, do what's called an advanced driving directive, where you fill out a piece of paper that says that you recognize that in the future, you may not be the best judge of your driving ability. And you give that ability to somebody you trust could be a child, could be a friend, a neighbor, somebody you trust. Um, and you can say that you just are willing to have a conversation with that person in the future, or you can go as far as saying that you will abide by what they think is best for you and give up the car keys if they think that you are no longer 
uh, able to drive. And you know that document can be stored with your will. It can be notarized, and or it could be something more informal where you just sign it and give a copy of that piece of paper to the person that you entrust. Well, Dr. Morgan Stern, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we're gonna pick up the conversation and talk about what you need to do to protect yourself and your loved ones. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Dr. Morgan Stern, thanks so much for staying with us. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two this morning. My pleasure. And a really important conversation. And, and I want to take a step back because as you were talking about this, I get the sense, I don't know when I ask you, that maybe the driving directive it may not be a required document, but when you look around the U.S., are there jurisdictions? How do they reassess a driver, a senior driver, someone, um, you know, during the license renewal process? Is there a process in place for for uh, DMVs and, and other policies to come in and help um, kind of shape whether or not you can renew and drive your car well into your uh, adult a aging years? Well, I think that uh, many states do it very differently. Uh, some people require people to come back and take a vision test. Uh, other states give you a license with no expiration date as long as you, you know, don't have an accident or don't have a um, a moving violation. Um, so things are very different, and and that's why I think it's really important that families really consider that they are primarily responsible. I don't think we can rely upon um, you know, legal entities and motor vehicle departments to uh, enforce this. Um, I think, you know, families are often the best equipped to assess the cognitive status of their loved one and to, um, you know, consider risk. In the study that we did, uh, about a third of caregivers and a third of, of people close to the individuals who had cognitive impairment expressed concern about their ability to drive. And those are the individuals that should have further testing to see if they're safe to operate a motor vehicle. Yeah, and I wonder, doctor, uh, as you're describing this, and I wonder if there's even technology that can be leveraged. Because, um, you know, they have driving, like a lot of insurance companies now have the ability to measure your driving ability. They can, you know, I, I forget what they call it, but like, for example, State Farm, Geico, others, and they can track your uh, your ability? Are you speeding too fast? And I wonder if there's a technology element here uh, to help caregivers make that determination. Yeah, I think that um, different technologies such as you're suggesting, um, you can work with your insurance company to do that. Again, I would prefer to have the assessments be before people get into trouble rather than after. Um, so one technology that's very useful is occupational therapists often employ driving simulators. Uh, 
Mm. You can go into a laboratory where it's nice and safe and sit behind a driving simulator, almost like a, an arcade game. Yeah. Uh, and um, the occupational therapist can assess your ability to um, you know, perform on the road. And then, of course, uh, the Department of Motor Vehicles or Secretary of State, whatever it's called in, in your area, can take you for an on-the-road driving test and, uh, again, assess the ability of the uh, person to drive. Uh, really, really, uh, that, you know, I, I'm familiar with flight simulators, having been a, not a gamer, but a kid growing up, but, but that sounds like a really safe approach to judging whether or not you have the, the, the spatial um, capabilities. Uh, last question, doctor, when it comes to the research that you're doing, look, we live in an aging, wet, Western culture is aging. It's not just here in the States, it's abroad. How do you follow up this research or do you follow up this research? Uh, because I, I get the sense as we're all, you know we're getting older, all of us. There's going to be more need for this type of data. So how do you follow up the research that and the study that you've done? Yeah, we're continuing to uh, evaluate this and other aspects uh, of aging in our study. Uh, we're very interested in how caregivers interact with their loved ones who have cognitive impairment to protect that person and to protect other people as well. Um, so that's all part of the research that we're doing. Yeah, really, really important. And and honestly, things you probably wouldn't think about that you need to do um, until maybe there was an accident so, or, or some kind of scare. So really important. Dr. Morgenstern, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thank you very much. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, then drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, then visit our website. Hey, we're back again tomorrow for BRN Weekly. Jane King will be here joining us from the NASDAQ to help break down markets. And then we'll take a look back at some of our best segments of the week. There's a lot of good stuff there, by the way. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe. Keep on saving. And don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.